Hi, this is Rico Figliolini, host of Peachtree Corners Life, a podcast that covers the city of Peachtree Corners and everything that's going on in this city. It's been a little while since we've been up, I think a few weeks, but I'm glad we're back and we have a great show today. Elections are coming up, so this is a great time to be able to speak to one of the candidates that we're going to be talking to that really, um, certainly all elected officials affect our lives, but this particular person and the board that she's on certainly affects a lot of families, um, whether the kids are in school or distance learning. We have a school board candidate with us, and we'll be discussing some of the issues out there and her background and where she is and how she sees the future over the next decade. Uh, but in, but first, before we get to her, I just do want to um, talk about our lead sponsor, Hargrave Fiber. Hargrave Fiber is a company that handles fiber optics, internet connection, and they work with not only small companies but large enterprise businesses, providing IT solutions, bundle solutions, especially in this time with COVID and, and teleworking that we've been doing over the last six to eight months, nine months. Um, they've been a resource to a lot of local communities. They're a big Southeast company. They're not the cable guy. They're out there in the community supporting community activities, and they're out there working to be able to make your life easier, whether it's at work or home, working from home. So Hargrave Fiber, company to go to, check them out. They believe they're still having their Visa, $1,000 Visa gift card for those that qualified as new accounts to be able to get awarded that. So go to hargravefiber.com or hargrave.com forward slash business. So that's our lead sponsor. Glad to have them. Thank you guys for supporting these podcasts. So my guest today is, is a lady that holds a PhD from the George State University of Education Administration, in Education Administration. She has an MED in English and Education from Emory. She's been a senior administrator at a variety of schools, Morehouse School of Medicine, Morris Brown College, Georgia Tech, the University of Georgia, and Oglethorpe University. She's been elected to the school board in Gwinnett County for six terms on, as a District 3 board member. She represents 31 schools, a lot of schools, and that's just a portion of that district, of the, of the county, actually. So I want to welcome Mary Kay Murphy from Peace Tree Corners. Hey, Mary Kay, how are you? Enrico, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We've been, uh, ever since, I guess I've moved in Peace Tree Corners in 95, just before the Olympics, and I've gotten to know you and, and uh, Michael Murphy, your husband, um, and, and the work that you've done over the last few decades here in Peace Tree Corners, certainly in the school system. So what I'd like, if, if it's possible, is for you to introduce yourself to our, our viewers and tell them a bit about yourself, more than what I've I've just given a resume, but tell them a bit more about yourself and, and who you are in this community. Well, thank you, Rico, so very, very much. I want to thank Peachtree Corners uh, and the, the remarkable work that you're doing here with your magazine and the great work that it, it, it underlies it. You're communicating with our community in a very significant way. You're featuring the points of life here in the Paul Duke. Uh, environment where we live, work, and play. So thank you so much for the great work you're doing. It's a pleasure to know your wife, Rita, and the great work she's doing with you at the magazine. Well, a little bit about me. I grew up in Denver, Colorado. I went to a Catholic woman's college and graduated there with a BA in English and in philosophy. I met my husband, a student then at the Air Force Academy, and we married, uh, after, actually after three days after he graduated. <laughs> I went to summer school the first summer that we were married. We married and moved to Georgia. And while we were in South Georgia, I had the privilege to teach in the public schools there. We moved to Sacramento, California, again with the Air Force, had an opportunity to teach in the public schools there. And we moved back to Georgia, to Marietta, where we had an opportunity. My, cus my husband worked at the Lockheed plant, again in the Air Force, and I taught at Marietta High School, a wonderful Blue Devil school. So those were the experiences early in our life that we had. And uh, his career changed greatly when he went to law school at Emory University, and he became a lawyer, and our life, 
here in this community was related to that. And I had a chance to go to Emory uh, Graduate School and to continue my studies of education. So that's a little bit about me, Rico. Thank you for asking. Sure. So what, what, you know, you've been serving on the board here in Peachtree Corners in District 3 for six terms. Why did you first get into wanting to run for school board? Well, I, I, it, I, you mentioned the number of uh, higher education institutions that I worked at. Georgia Tech, University of Georgia, Oglethorpe University, Morehouse School of Medicine, and Morris Brown College. And in that work, it became so crystal clear to me that unless a student has an excellent K through 12 education, there'd be no way that student could come to any of the institutions that I worked at. And, and so when I moved here to Gwinnett County, the opportunity came for an open board seat. And there were a number of people in the community who approached Mike, my husband, and then me, were, would I be interested in serving on the school board and would I be interested in running for the office? And I was indeed very interested. By that time, our children were out of high school. I certainly have found in the work that I've been doing on the board that it takes an almost 24 hour experience the family has. And by the time I started my quote unquote political career, our children were in college and it, it didn't quite affect their lives as much as it might have had they been in the house. But I was very interested in what I could do as a single citizen to help promote excellence in K-12 education. And so that really is what got me interested. It, it seemed like the next natural step to the work I'd done in elementary, middle and high school and then in colleges and universities. And it's been a fantastic experience. What a great way to know this community. What a great way to be appreciative of how much the community agrees with me that we want an excellent public school education for every student regarding of their regardless of their race regardless of their socioeconomic background sorry guys we're frozen again this rarely this rarely happens um mayor k should be back shortly there you are okay Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know where this is happening. <laughs> so uh, K through 12 education right. became terribly, terribly powerful in its importance, given the work that I've done in colleges and universities. And I'm so very glad that I had that opportunity. And I'm so appreciative the community would allow me to represent them for the number of years that I've been on the board. It's been, a, it's been a while, lots of issues, different issues over the last uh, two decades of what the school faces from, you know, 20 years ago to what we're facing now. Certainly a world of difference. Let's get right into it. Let's get into some of the uh, some of these issues, some of the things coming up. Certainly it's an election year. So one of the things on the ballot this year for the November 3rd uh, election, which you know, if you had the absentee voter ballot or if you did early voting, you've already voted on this maybe. But if not, uh, it's the East Bloss, the Education Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, which is already in effect. So it's not an additional tax. This is the penny tax and it's an extension of that tax that raises close to a billion dollars for Gwinnett County Schools in over five years. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that, uh, Mary Kay, and what in there is important that we should be aware of so this way we can vote intelligently about this? Well, thank you, Rico. It, it is a great opportunity for our community to continue a very, very important initiative that not many states have as an option. In 1997, in, well, let me say 1996, the Georgia General Assembly passed enabling legislation that would allow every county in the state to determine for itself would they like to use one penny out of every dollar spent in the community on a tax that would go to benefit the schools. There already was a special purpose local option sales tax for the county, the libraries, the roads, the parks. But in 1996, that opportunity came our way. And the a referendum was brought to the community in 1997 and was overwhelmingly approved. 
We have done that five different times. Enrico, I can say to you in all honesty, if we had not had that one penny sales tax over these years, when we've had such incredible enrollment in our school system, growing, some would say by leaps and bounds, yes. we would yes. never have been able to provide the facilities that we have in these years. So the special purpose local option sales tax is focused on facilities and reducing bond indebtedness. It's to be used for no other purpose. And so sure. we have a, 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 we have a continuation. Oh, thank you so much. We have a continuation of the sales tax on the ballot, as we go, you have mentioned, and it's at, mm -hmm. almost at the bottom of the ballot. You would see my name as a candidate and just below that you will find the special purpose local option sales tax initiative yes or no now as a member a sitting member of the board i cannot have any influence over what you do with that but i can urge you to look at it and to read the language and to begin to again appreciate what a great contribution that one penny has made it built the paul duke high school mm -hmm the Paul Duke STEM school, it built Norcross High School, it built Stripling Elementary School. These are schools here in District 3 in the Norcross cluster. And it has built 79 schools, all open debt free since the special purpose local option sales tax was authorized. And uh, so the community has an opportunity again to see what we might be able to do to extend it. So it would be our sixth SPLOST, as it's called, and it will take place in two years for another four years. Uh, uh, to me, the East Bloss is, a, is a, a godsend, if you will. I mean, I've been, I was involved in the parks, on the Parks Authority in Gwinnett County for a while, and same deal there. I mean, if we didn't have the uh, SPLOST uh, to be able to purchase land to make into parks, I mean, we wouldn't have half the parks we have now, same, obviously, detailing out the schools that, that have been built. And, I, and I'll be a little uh, selfish in Peachtree Corners because this is Peachtree Corners life uh, that, uh, you know, we've gotten good benefits from the East Coast, uh, paid sales tax by other people, some of us as well. Uh, but certainly in a place where the city of Peachtree Corners has about 85 percent of the people that work here come from other places other parts of the, of the county and city are not from Peachtree Corners. So they're spending their money here, or at least before COVID, right? They spend their money on hotels, restaurants, and all that. So all that money is being cycled back into the uh, ecosystem. So I'm glad that's yeah, out that's, there. That's a tremendous point to make that we, we uh, anticipate that approximately 40% of what will be yielded by this block will come from people from outside our county coming into this county and, right. and right. making purchases. Right. And not only does it build schools and, and infrastructure, capital infrastructure, but it also goes into one-time purchases, right? Updating technology, modernizing safety and security equipment, supporting of digital learning and, you know, whatever that means as far as laptops and all that maybe. Uh, less efficient vehicles are replaced. HVACs need to be replaced, repaired, painting. I mean, busy. a whole ton of maintenance that are one-time things that have to be done throughout a system like this, right? And, and that's what comes under the definition of the capital purposes. Yeah. Uh, so anything capital and then anything that has to do with retiring bond indebtedness. So get out there, and if you haven't voted yet, now hopefully if you did, you voted yes for the East Blast uh, to my listeners and uh, to viewers. So I hope you're out there, uh, you know, doing the right thing, supporting the education system as we see it right now. So other things going on, obviously uh, COVID has, has done a job to a lot of school systems across the country, to families. Um, you know, we're all, whether... You know, the fact that some families have felt, uh, have faced death in family members or sickness or ongoing sickness, even after coming back from COVID. I've known friends and people that have still ongoing issues, even after coming back from having COVID for a few weeks or a few or a month. Um, 
But it's affecting the school system, right? Uh, we want to keep our kids safe. Like, you know, we have children. We want to keep them safe. We want to keep our educators safe. But it's affecting the school system and, and probably affecting the strategic direction of what the school system is going to be doing over the next decade, right? Because we don't know how long COVID, COVID will last. We don't know if we'll have a solution that's an ongoing solution. Um, and we don't know what the next decade will bring if there's any other pandemic that may arise. So what challenges do you, do you see right now that, is, um, that the school board is facing over the next, uh, call it six months, um, that you can share with well, us? Thank you, thank you, thank you for such a very helpful question because this does provide a community forum to share information with the community mm -hmm. uh, and find out also from the community, how are we doing? We are always committed in Gwinnett County Public Schools to what can we do more, better, and differently. So within the next six months, we'll face a change from the first semester to the second semester. And we have announced that there will be a choice again for parents and family members, a school choice between in-person learning and online learning. And that opportunity is available online now on the parent portal for every parent to participate in making that choice. And so that's a very, very significant component of what we are facing. In addition, we are facing a continuation of the very excellent work that the school system has been able to do with our teachers, providing those leadership opportunities for our parents to not only have children in class, but online. We feel in the last three weeks, I have visited 18 schools if here in the Peachtree Corners and in the District 3 area. And it has just been amazing to me the innovation that I have witnessed among the principals and the teachers and the staff. It's just been an incredible uh, time to, to see innovation at its very best. So I will expect that we'll be able to see continuation of that innovation. And by that, what do I mean? Well, we have the mitigation underway in every one of the schools in our county. There's been great direction from the Department of Public Health from Georgia, Department of Public Health here in Gwinnett County, Rockdale and Newton, from the governor's office, and most especially from Johns Hopkins University that has a daily dashboard for Gwinnett County revealing how the COVID pandemic is doing here in our community. Oh yeah, I've seen that. One of the other things that's so very important and it will continue in the next six months is a daily update on the part of our school system on its website to the parents and community members who want to know how many students, how many staff, how many faculty have been affected with COVID. And there's a formula for getting online. It's right online and it's by school. So if you want to find out, for example, what's going on at North Cross High School, we have directions for you. Go to the web page and click on Gwinnett by the numbers. And as you're on that site, you will be able to click down and you will be able to find the information that has to do with COVID providing information daily on positive cases, suspected cases, and close contact. And after this podcast, we go, it, I think it would be a very helpful thing if you might be able to post the specific steps for our community to be able to follow because I think this is one of the great innovations that we've been able, and also one of the ways we've been able to establish trust with our community. And the last thing I would say about this is that many school systems around us have not been able to bring students back yet. We're so very pleased that we're in our third month of face-to-face -face learning for students who have had such a need to be facing with their teacher, special education students, those students whose needs are, are, are related to the kind of services that only they can get in the schools. So we will, ex we will certainly be expecting a continuation of online and in-person learning. 
Yeah, it's an interesting challenge, right? I mean, I have a high school kid at Paul Duke's STEM. He's doing the distance learning. Originally, he thought he was going to go in, but then he decided he wanted the distance learning. Um, and it's working for him. I don't know if it works for every kid, right. um, but it's certainly working for him, except maybe in calculus. But <laughs> other than that, <laughs> he's getting online tutoring from, from his teachers, which is good because the teachers That's are great. still doing some of the That's online right. tutoring. Uh, they're doing face-to-face. -face. Counselors are meeting with the students as well. Uh, so if there's any stress or any uh, needs for the tutoring or any questions a, a student has, they are responding really well, uh, I, I see. First-hand experience that I can, that I can say. Well, that's, so that's I, wonderful to hear. Excuse me? That's wonderful to hear. Yeah, no, it's good. And uh, as, long as, as long as he has, a, and he has three AP courses, so it's doing oh, this. My Online. Like just one other thing. Um, yeah. We were very aware that, for just as the, you point out, there's a great bit of stress involved uh, for our students and certainly for our faculty members. And when our students uh, have the opportunity, if they have needs for what is called social emotional learning, we have social workers, we have mental health professionals, we have nurses. So we are staffed and counselors, of course, school counselors. We are staffed to help provide the nurturing that this type of pandemic, something we've never experienced before, mm -hmm. uh, has a way of being mitigated on the part of teachers and on the part of students. So thank you for letting me add that. Sure, sure thing. Um, so we covered in-person and digital learning for a little bit. Um, certainly there are you know, challenges for kids that are, don't, uh, that might be in need of um, the ability to get on Wi-Fi, um, tablets or laptops, because not everyone has uh, that ability, or the bandwidth, let's say, on internet, uh, to be able to do that. I know that the county has been uh, working towards helping with some of those challenges. Could you share a little bit about what the county may be doing there? Surely. In terms of our uh, budget, we have had to dip into our reserve funds. We're very pleased we have the reserve funds we, 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 we got an initial allotment from the CARES Act, $68 million. And then we have dipped into the reserve fund for our school system so that we could take care of the $100 million reduction in funding that the state uh, allotment provided to us this year. The funding that we have used uh, has gone very directly to purchasing Chromebooks for our students those who needed them and, and purchasing hotspots so that there could be access once a student had a Chromebook and could take it home. We've been able to, through our Gwinnett County Foundation, to be able to purchase with funds that the foundation has raised more books for our students. We believe at this time that we've got our most urgent needs covered. We purchased 44,000 Chromebooks we purchased more than 10,000 hotspots, and we distri distributed those to the students throughout our school system. The funding from the Gwinnett uh, County Foundation has it allowed us to purchase even additional uh, Chromebooks. And we are so appreciative that the, the, the county uh, commissioners have also contributed funds to our school system through the foundation with additional purchase of Chromebooks. And it, it, it has been one of the incredible, unexpected growths uh, and, and findings of COVID. We had our three or four days of learning, uh, we thought, on computers with no problem in case of snowstorms or in case of right. hurricanes, sure. what, whichever we find ourselves with. We were not prepared for the six months that we've uh, endured. So we've been able, with a lot of ingenuity and innovation, and a lot of great support from our community to provide funding so that we've been able to do this for our students. The problem with the Chromebooks, they do wear out, they, they do get lost, and so there is a continuing need, not only on our part, but on the part of 15,000 school systems in, this, in the nation, all of them wanting Chromebooks too. Yeah. It, it, just to be able to find the supply, that supply chain is difficult, especially when there are companies needing employees even to work in, 
and then buying those laptops as well to provide to your employees. So it's, it's a comp- right? So it's a competition out there. And then, of course, you get people that have heard, you know, this is why, for example, I know going through the line at Paul Duke, you had to bring your student with you. You had to provide student ID to be able to pick up a laptop. Because believe it or not, there are still people out there that want to game the system and maybe get a free laptop for nothing. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that happens too. So security is an issue, right? Um, exactly. And, and cybersecurity and, and all that uh, also that happens. One other thing, if I might mention, that we will sure. be able to continue. You asked about the next six months. We've yeah. been very appreciative that the Department of Agriculture has allowed us to continue with our food supply and distribution. Uh, at all of our high schools, at, at, at our Title I schools. So this will continue free of charge to the um, to the school system until December 31st. Right. And the, the schools are distributing it from 11 to 1 on a daily basis when school is in operation. And if there's no need to provide identification, people in the community will have access to it with 18 years and under. Uh, sure. and, and sometimes with 18 years and older, there's not, <laughs> there's, there's no identification required to pick up the lunches. Sure. sure. And that, <laughs> yeah, that may, that makes sense. I mean, food is one thing. I mean, no one should be without that. Um, let's, we're, we're getting towards the end of our time together, but I do have a, a bunch of other questions I want to put in. So let's see if we can hit some of them fairly, fairly easy. Um, how would you grade the current board's handling of COVID-19? And we've discussed most of it here, but what grade would you give this board uh, as it exists now? What, you know, as far as handling the COVID-19 situation? Well, it, it, it is something that we would look to the community to provide the grade, <laughs> yeah, but sure. I, I certainly try to try to be reflective here with your question. On the, in the, uh, area of innovation i would grade our board with an a the innovation that has been even such a thing when we're talking about the food distribution mm-hmm. our bus drivers and our cafeteria managers worked together and established a pattern where they would go into the community and distribute food that was an incredible innovation on their part uh, in terms of the classrooms the kind of mitigation that has been taking place. I, I'd say innovation and cleanliness and health, I'd give us an A on that for sure. As far as the concern of the community for our, the care of our teachers, we're very concerned about our teachers. And all that we have done has been not only to mitigate the effects of COVID on our schools, but to mitigate it for the benefit of our teachers who are coming to work and to our students who are either coming to school or having online. We are also, um, we've also made accommodations through our human resources office for those teachers who are not comfortable coming back to school Mm -hmm. if they have COVID related um, incidents that they are work from home. Uh, So I would certainly say a to A minus for all of the initiatives that we have underway, it would be for the community to say to us, have we got this right? Sure. Have we met your needs? Have we, have we met the needs, especially of the students who had no access to learning online and had no way to be a participant in such an important time in their lives? as they have had. So it sounds boastful, Rico, but I I am saying to you that I have myself visited uh, 18 schools, and from that sample, I would certainly say we've done a very very credible job, and I'm very proud of our administrators and our our staff and our, our teachers. How, how much they've risen to the occasion. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's boastful when someone talks about this. If you are if you can be aware of how well your board has done, has how well you've done, there's nothing wrong with being able to share and say that. Certainly on the other side of the coin, there will be people saying maybe the school board didn't do enough. 
you know, you know what? You're right about grading. This is what elections are about, and there are consequences, right? So if people are happy with what they see and what the school board has done, the leadership remains, right? Uh, hopefully that's the way life works. It doesn't always work that way, but, you know. May, may I add to what you've said? Um, we we're, were so very appreciative and, and proud of Dr. Audrey Arona, who is the director of the Gwinnett Department of Health for mm -hmm. Newton, Rockdale, and Gwinnett County. And Dr. Arona has visited our schools, and she has said with an article on the front page of the Gwinnett Daily Post right. that Gwinnett County's response to the coronavirus in the area of health and mitigation is the model for the nation. The model for the nation. And Dr. Rona is highly regarded in the area of public health. And when we hear that, it gives us this great encouragement that we're on the right track. So maybe she's also grading us. <laughs> hey, it's, it's hard to say. <laughs> That's right. If I know anything about Gwinnett County being here so long, is that I know the government of Gwinnett County, whether it's education or parks or other areas, do a phenomenal Class A job uh, in what they do. So kudos to you. There are a lot of other things going on also. I know that it's difficult to hire bus drivers as well as teachers sometimes and to fill the gaps of what's needed. Uh, do you support higher pay for bus drivers and uh, teachers? I, I, I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that this year with our budget, the way we have uh, structured it, 95% of our teaching course, core, and we have 12,500 teachers will get a raise. They will get a step raise. They will also not be furloughed and they will not be laid off. That was an insistence that we had as we put together the budget for this year. And certainly for bus drivers, it's, they are the most, many could say they're the most important component of our school system. They're the first to see our students in the morning and they're the last to see our students in the afternoon. And so for our bus drivers who are heroes as well, and sheroes, we've got some tremendous leaders in that area. And we did, we were able to give a bonus to our school bus drivers this most recent academic year. We certainly hope to be able to do that again this year. So uh, especially these two components are the teachers and the bus drivers are what, and the cafeteria managers mm -hmm. have, are what has been, have been able to allow us to have the success that we've had in returning our students to school and, and providing online learning. Um, do you support the district's current use of school resource officers? And how would that change if you, if you see a change coming? I definitely support the, the school resource officer employment in our school system. Rico, we've worked very hard over numbers of years to be able to find in our budget the funds to have two school resource officers at every high school. You know, our high schools are very large, 3,500. Um, and they're, they're remarkable leaders. They provide counseling, they provide teaching. This, and since 2015, school resource officers have provided 8,333 classes teaching in our schools, mm -hmm. making certain that our students have the information that they need coming from the schools about safety and about security. Our school resource officers also work with our parent groups on school games. We're very, very appreciative of the work they do. And I support increasing the number of school resource officers as our student uh, enrollment grows. We have one at each middle school now, and we have a school resource officer that is shared with elementary schools. It might be in the elementary school area that we would grow the most. Okay. So definitely school resource officers. Excellent. Um, do you see, you know, the you have, uh, and I'm not sure if I, I'm in remiss in not knowing this, I guess, but Gwinnett County Commission, for example, and uh, stream their meetings, uh, City of Peachtree Corners, City, City Council streams their meetings. There's some transparency about 
you know, what, how people can look at government, find that information. Do you see any change or in transparency or accountability that you would like to see uh, in the school system at this point, especially because of COVID and, and um, you know, I think people are more engaged actually being home now even. So what do you, do you see anything there going on? Well, I'm very uh, supportive of what we have done to string our school board meetings. So much of what happens in our school board happens in the business meeting, and that is in the afternoon, 2 o'clock, uh, and then followed by a public meeting at 6.15 and another one at 7. We've had very, very good response from our community about their ability to see and hear and understand in a way that they might not have been uh, if they had not come to a meeting individually. So that's been a great benefit of COVID. And it, as far as transparency, Rico, Gwinnett County Public Schools, in fact, I took time at our last school board meeting to, to enumerate the incredible number of ways that Gwinnett County Public School is transparent with our community. For example, every school in our community, 141 schools, has, a, has an accountability report that we give to the community on our school, uh, individual school websites. You click on accountability report and opens up a four page report on the, the way that the students have performed on standardized tests, what the racial breakdown is, etc. We have in numerous, we have numerous reports such as that. The, the one concern that I have in our community is that people may not be aware, just as I've told you about the COVID-19 reports on a daily basis, they just may not be aware of how to access those. That would be, I believe, a, a really great step forward sure. just to make certain sure. of our community, maybe even like a table of context, contents or an index. Where do you find this and what steps might you take? I believe our community has a commitment and trust with us they trust us to be transparent, but we we make so many things available. I'm not certain that every community member who, who wants them knows how to access them. So that would be my my response to you. We're transparent, but but we need to shout it. <laughs> we, need, right, right. We, need, we need to um, make certain our community is aware of how, how to access it. Yeah, I think people can be not for anything. I think people can be a little lazy and not wanting to step forward to, to get the information that's there. But I also think looking at the Gwinnett County Public School website, which is a good looking website, has good information. I think they can make it a little easier uh, navigation wise by one click to be able to get right to that information right. versus right. trying to step through the, uh, the navigation. Just make it real easy and just say, school information you know or whatever that needs and to you know, say, right? and you know Rigo, if we did that even i could i could find a way to get it <laughs> <laughs> all of us can so we we've we've done i think we've covered quite a bit over the short period of time we've been able to have together um appreciate your time doing this with me mary kay oh, i and, appreciate you doing it with me yeah no this was good I, i'm always learning new things and always picking up more more information and it enlightens me as I hope it does with my viewers. Um, obviously, you're in a campaign. Uh, this is an election season, November 3rd. For those that haven't done the early voting, the you know the absentee ballot, if you're going in to vote or over the next week or so or on November 3rd, uh, school board elections are there. District 3 is the school board district that Mary Kay Murphy represents, which is the North Cross Cluster, Duluth Cluster. Yes, Peachtree Ridge Cluster, Ridge Cluster. River Hill Cluster, Lanier, Lanier Cluster, Suwannee Cluster, North Gwinnett. Excellent. So you do have uh, a race. There is a, an opponent that's running um, uh, against you, and that's Tanisha Banks. So I just want to be you know, able to put that out there, that Tanisha Banks is the of the opposing candidate on the ballot for school board. Um, so why don't you, and I do this with every candidate that comes on with me, why don't you give us um, you know, the reason why someone should be voting for you and also tell them where they can find out more information. Thank you. Well, thank you, Rico. First of all, thank you and Peachtree Corners Life 
for the opportunity to have this wonderful hour with you today. I am Mary Kay Murphy, and I'm running for District 3 School Board member here in Gwinnett County Public Schools. I believe that my background and my experience and my record supports my, my commitment and my desire to have you vote for me, Mary Kay Murphy, for District 3 School Board member. I bring, I bring continuity to the board. And that's a terribly important component. We have many members who are new, and there's something great about having new board members, new blood. We have 10 strategic directions, and Rico and I made reference to what would be happening in the next six months here. What would be happening in the next 10 years? Strategic directions 2030. This would be my platform with our community. I will be with the community as we implement these 10 documents, drivers, and the direction, a deeper dive into Gwinnett County Public Schools strategic direction. The specific components of my platform commit to safe and secure schools. And I commit to that with the support of 96 school resource officers and additional officers to keep our students and our teachers safe in years to come. I support fiscal stability, and I have, I'm here to share with you that during my time on the board, we've had AAA bond ratings from Standard and Poor's and Moody's for 20 years. That fiscal responsibility has been reflected in the tax that you pay to the school board, and for the last six years, you've had no increase in your millage rate. Fiscal stability and honesty and trust and truth. I support school choice. We have not only in-person and online learning in terms of school choice, but we have two different kinds of schools called Duke and Norcross. In the Meadow Creek cluster, McFloor High School and Meadow Creek High School. And soon in the Mill Creek cluster, the, the, the secondary school for artificial intelligence <clears throat> and for uh, Mill Creek. School choice is terribly important to parents, and we have been very pleased to be able to provide that <clears throat> in, our, in our work together. I support retaining, retaining our teachers and recruiting the very best and making certain that we pay them a very fair salary and that their conditions of employment lead to a successful retirement and that the retirement funds we pay into our school system will not overlook what great work our teachers have done. I continue to support closing the achievement gap for the students that we have here, all students, all socioeconomic levels, all backgrounds. These students are all ours and our work together is meant to improve the choices they have in career, college, and civic life. And most importantly, I wanna share with you the value that I have for diversity and for equity. I have championed as we have been able to hire our first chief equity officer in Gwinnett County Public School System. We are in the process of, of reviewing our discipline code and all components of our system to make sure that our facilities, that our programs, and that every, every component of Gwinnett County Public Schools would be offered to all our students in an equitable way. These are some of the reasons that I believe my candidacy is the candidacy that you should choose if you should choose to vote for me, Mary Kay Murphy. It has been an honor to serve as your school board member. We've made great success in, this, in the years in the, the past. However, I want to look toward the future and the years ahead. I would greatly appreciate your vote. And uh, if you want to find out more about me, more, better, differently, please visit my website, Mary K Works, M A R Y K A Y W R K S, Mary K Works, and my campaign reelections site, Reelect Mary K Murphy. Thank you so very much for listening to this request. It would be my honor to serve as your, as your incumbent returning. Gwinnett County School Board member for District 3. Thank you, Rico, for the opportunity. Sure. Stay with me for a minute. I uh, want to close out. I uh, want to thank you, Mary Kay, for a great 
conversation here to be able to discuss issues here in Peace Street Corners. And uh, also just to, so then people understood that website, it's marykayworks.com is where you should be going. Um, so it's been a great 45 minutes. Appreciate you being with me. So hang in there for one more moment. I'm just going to close out. Everyone, thank you for being with me on this. We're back in and we're going to be doing some more podcasts. I'll also check out our other podcast. We're going to be doing uh, Capitalist Sage. There's an episode next week. That's a twice month business podcast that I do. And I believe next week may also, or the Thursday after the fourth Tuesday, we're doing prime lunchtime with the city manager. So we'll be discussing some stuff with him. And also I will be doing a podcast with uh, Councilman Phil Saad and maybe some other council people in the next week or so about uh, issues that are coming up in the uh, election um, as far as what's on the ballot with transit and all that. So hang in there. Lots of stuff coming. Like our Facebook page if that's where you are not at. Go find it. It's Peace Tree Corner's Life. And uh, check out our lead sponsor, Hargrave Fiber. So I want to thank you, everyone, for being with me. And be safe out there. Have a great day.